I am standing in our bottom swale. This is the first swale that we ever dug. Uh, it was more done as a sort of sketch, very simple uh, swale, just to see how we got on with it and whether it worked for what we'd intended. And we were so impressed with it that we put another load in, you know, within about six months or so. A swale is basically a ditch that's dug on contour. It's not like a drainage ditch designed to have water run away from a place where you run it down the slope. It runs completely along the slope, completely on contour, completely level. And then the earth that's excavated is put on the downhill side, typically as a tree planting system, like these willow here. Um, and they're usually used in uh, dry land situations where, where you get sudden, um, very large rain events, but it's a generally dry climate. And you want to hang on to every single drop. When it all drops at once, like they typically get in monsoon events, it uh, runs away from sight and that's it, you're done for months at a time. Whereas a swale will back flood behind, hold on to a huge amount of water and slowly infiltrate it into the ground. So why are we using them on a really saturated, really boggy Scottish hillside? Well, the reason we're using them is because it's very boggy, very wet Scottish hillside. See, I'm standing in the minute at about an inch or two of water. Uh, we've had major, major rain events. I mean, the typical, uh, if I go more than, I'll show you a particularly bad spot. So here, I'm right at the top of the site. Behind the camera, the land goes, I don't know, maybe a foot or two higher, and then drops away in a gradual slope. And then in front of the camera, what you can see is a gradual downhill slope all the way to the loch. There's no overland flow. This is just what's landed on the land over the last few days. And you can see, it's, if I open a little trench, you see that instantly starts filling with water. It's just, you can see water actually running down into it. You can see just how, I mean, it's like soup. And into that, you can't really plant trees, not if you expect them to do a great deal. So we've got a lot of the shelter belt trees in, uh, a bulk plantings just to see what takes. But when it comes to things like fruit trees and stuff uh, that actually matters, so fruit and nut production trees, you can't plant into this and expect it to do well because this is a particularly wet winter. But we could have this once every three, four winters easily. Um, and yeah, this will drown fruit trees. You know, they can't cope without the air spaces uh, around um, the uh, particles of soil around the roots, they drown over the winter. They need a good, well-drained soil. Whereas if we compare this to the soil next to the swale that we were just at, to this berm here, it's night and day. This has got two foot solidly clear of the water. And even on the uphill side, that is a lot firmer it's a little bit wet, but it's been throwing it down for days. Compare that to the squelching I was having at the top of the field, bear in mind, we're much lower down in the landscape. It should be boggier, if anything, and it's actually drier. And the reason is not just that we got a swale, but because we got a very specialist kind of swale. I'll show you what we've done differently. So I'm right at the end of the swale, and this is what makes the difference. Now, it doesn't have to be done in concrete. This is just what I started out doing. I actually do this with compacted earth then. But this is the key to it all. And it's just a simple pipe monk. So in summer, I can tilt this upwards and any rainfall we get, if we had a major rain event, we'll sit into the ditch, we'll fill up and we can hang on to every last drop of it because it will soak into the berm and grow willow. But in winter, when if it filled up to this level, obviously we'd be losing a good foot of freeboard above the water level. We can drop that down and the swale drains through a pipe and down into a pond, which has its own spillway and away, all part of the big um, integrated earthwork system. But this technique of putting a monk onto a swale so we can adjust it depending on what the season is, allows us a huge amount of resiliency because even in a very cold, wet winter like this, we can drop the monks and we can effectively have it operate as a, like a drainage grid. But whereas a conventional drainage system, it's going to drain all year no matter what you do. With this, we can reset it in the summer and hand to every single drop. So we're resilient to flood, we're, you know, we're like major uh, rain events. We're resilient to droughts. We're resilient to everything that's going to become increasingly common as uh, the climate continues to shift. And 
incredibly um, dramatic um, uh, weather events become more the norm. Systems like this add a huge amount of resiliency to a small system like this. Swales currently are fairly unpopular. People are saying that it's, it's generally considered in permaculture circles that any place you're going to put a swale, you can put something better. I can't think of anything that will function the same as this swale with minimal work. And bear in mind this, I've dug swales in on this land by hand with a spade. You don't need big machinery, you don't need a huge amount of budget, you just need a spade and you can build things like this. Um, I mean, you could even have an adjustable swale by using a big clod of clay at the end that you move in and out depending on the season. You don't even need a piece of pipe and a concrete. You can just, it can be as simple as you need it to be. And another thing that people dislike about them is they say they limit um, access on site. And they kind of do, you know, I, wouldn't, I couldn't bring, you know, heavy machinery through here. But I could put any simple pipe through it. I mean, it doesn't have to be anything significant, just a basic pipe that wide through the bottom of the ditch. And I can backfill and I can bring vehicles through. I can put a crossing anywhere that I like with a spade in about an afternoon. I don't think that limits access anywhere on site. Also, uh, another complaint is that um, they're permanent and they're difficult to undo. Again, I don't think so. I mean, I put it in with a spade, I could fill it back in with a spade. The pond and so on, granted, you know, that's going to be a whole different ballgame. But, you know, the ponds are a different part of the system. Um, and really, a most, even the most rabid anti-swale permaculturist still says that putting in water infiltration ponds is a really good idea. So, you know, each to their own. I tend to not worry about what's fashionable and what isn't and go with what works. And in our context, on this situation, this swale allows me to grow things that I couldn't otherwise. They would die. So, yeah, I can keep things alive in drought and in severe weather events in terms of, you know, major rainfall that I couldn't grow otherwise. I think it's a brilliant system.